six on your side at ten starts now. When we were outside, he was he was chasing people and stabbing them. So we went inside the closet. Yeah, we hid in the closet. I brought him, my, my two sisters, and one more kid. Tonight, a community coming together, trying to make sense of a senseless act of violence that leaves nine people hospitalized. A stabbing spree at a three-year-old girl's birthday party in a Boise apartment complex. Six of those victims, children. We'll get to that story in a moment, but first, two suspects remain on the loose tonight after an officer involved shooting in a South Boise subdivision. A Meridian police officer is now recovering from emergency surgery after being shot twice in the leg. Tonight, he's in stable condition. We're told that officer was pursuing a man believed to have an outstanding warrant when shots were fired. That officer shot back, killing one suspect on scene, but two others took off. It all happened near Maple Grove and Overland shortly after 1.30 this afternoon. Six on your side, Steve Dent spoke with neighbors from the typically quiet community. Just before 2 p.m., officers attempted to pull over a black Dodge Durango, and one of the suspects made a run for it. As the officer got closer, the suspect pulled a gun on the officer and shot at least two times. Um, officer has... Uh, uh, injuries to his lower extremities. Police say the injured officer fired back and killed the suspect, and those shots were heard by a neighbor. I was just outside here working on some stuff, and I heard a couple of uh, bursts of firepower, and uh, you know it was probably six, seven shots each burst, and it was some definitely some serious power. I'm not sure exactly where it came from across the street, but uh, as soon as it was over, there was it wasn't very long before somebody responded to it because when law enforcement hears officer down, shots fired. And that increases the stress level of everybody. And, and just like any brother or sister, they want to come help. And it happened in this quiet neighborhood. People leave their doors unlocked around here, so it's an odd thing to hear something like this go on. The police say one Hispanic female and an unknown male got away, perhaps in that black Dodge Durango. We did recover the one gun. However, we have to assume that the other suspects are armed and dangerous as well. But for now, police are asking the people in this neighborhood to be vigilant. We advise anybody in the immediate area to shelter in place, keep the doors locked, and to uh, call 911 if they see anything suspicious. Steve Dent, six on your side. This afternoon, police found the suspects Dodge Durango abandoned at a nearby car wash. Surveillance video, though, shows the two remaining suspects getting away in another car, a gold SUV. Police described those suspects as a Hispanic female with dark hair and a heavy set man with blonde hair. Officials are urging anyone with information to contact police. And now to our other top story tonight, a brutal mass stabbing at a Boise apartment complex leaves nine people hospitalized with serious injuries. Six of those victims are children, one of them flown to Salt Lake City for treatment. Today we learned those victims were attending a three year old girl's birthday party in the Wiley Lane apartment complex off State Street. That call came in Saturday night just before nine o'clock and within four minutes, Boise police officers arrived on scene and arrested the suspect. Victims were found inside apartments and in the complex parking lot. Boise Police Chief Bill Bones describes the injuries as life changing. It's something that gets to each of us. I think it gets to each person that's, that's listening right now that's, that's a member of Boise. Um, it just not tugs at your heartstrings. It tears your heart apart. All victims involved were refugees coming to Boise from Syria, Iraq, and Ethiopia. The suspect is now in the Ada County Jail and has been identified as 30-year-old Timmy Kinner of Los Angeles, California. Chief Bones says Kinner was temporarily staying with a resident at the apartment complex, but was asked to leave just this Friday because of his behavior. The chief says Kinner returned last night to get revenge. Now, as you can imagine, the community is reeling from the news of last night's events, but they're not letting the stabbing redefine what Boise is known for. Instead, individuals showed up to the apartment complex today to share in the grief and work together to heal.
It's tragic to me. Much of the Treasure Valley woke up to the news of a mass stabbing, not knowing what to do or how to comprehend the terrible event happening in Boise, a town usually left off the map when it comes to attacks and brutal acts of violence. We're a welcoming com uh, city. We don't have areas of high crime. Um, most people that I know in Boise want to share our city with refugees and immigrants. But after the stabbing of nine people, some of whom were children and refugees, community members felt the need to come down to the neighborhood affected and make sure this act is not what Boise becomes known for. No, this is not representative of Boise and it shouldn't be representative of anywhere. I guess at the end of the day, the least we can do is show up and just say, we see you and we love you and we're sorry. That apology for the acts of one man fell to citizens of Boise showing up at the Northwest Boise apartment complex with flowers, hugs, and to share in the grief and hopefully find a way to move forward together. There's just so much divisive nature right now. It's an easy thing to leave flowers, but people feel alone and they need to not. A kinner will be arraigned in Ada County Court tomorrow, and a candlelight vigil is also planned for Monday evening to honor the victims in that attack. That's set for 6 p.m. in front of Boise City Hall. Now, the On Your Side forecast. And a typical early July day here in southern Idaho on the first day of July with temperatures in the valley hitting the mid 80s in most locations. A few places getting into the upper 80s. And here's a view of our Toyota Tower Cam on top of the Grove, Ho rather on top of the Red Lion Hotel. Sun is setting now, but a beautiful evening in Boise as our temperatures are still in the very comfortable zone. 77 degrees right now uh, at the Boise Airport with a light breeze out of the north northwest at around six miles per hour. The winds will pick up tomorrow as a cold front starts to move in our direction. It's 79 right now in Mountain Home, already down to 50 degrees in Stanley. It will be a chilly start in Stanley tomorrow morning, and especially on Tuesday morning with those morning lows getting down into the 30s. Yeah, it is July. Not much cloud cover. We saw just a few clouds over the uh, central mountains way up north, and the Clearwater Mountains had a little bit of cloud cover, but no precipitation anywhere in the state of Idaho today. 56 is what we're expecting for a morning low tomorrow under clear sky. Tomorrow's afternoon highs will be cooler than today's. Tuesday's cooler yet, but on the 4th, we spike up in temperatures. How hot it will be and how long that will last in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Steve. Well, Idaho is failing. The state received a big fat F in a new national education study that tallies the number of Hispanics with college degrees. Idaho ranked dead last in the nation. Six on your side's Michelle Edmonds explores what's being done to change that statistic in tonight's Making the Grade. Idaho has a goal to reach by 2025. The state wants 60% of all 25 to 34 year olds to attain a college degree or certification. In order to make that goal, lawmakers and educators must focus on helping more Latinos continue their education after high school, which is exactly what the College of Western Idaho is doing. This is uh, called a carne asada en el parque. It basically just means that we're having a barbecue. It's a fiesta with a purpose. The College of Western Idaho has started a new outreach program to the Hispanic community, both on and off campus. Local community college leaders realize they must do more to help this so-called gap population. We've also seen a, a gap in terms of how many students of minority and special populations are coming into the institution versus the greater majority. Uh, not just that, we've seen a difference in our retention rate. Yo, get a group together. Just recently, CWI started using cultural activities to keep students engaged in school. It's something Angelica Vasquez Molina wished she had during her first year at CWI. It was crazy. It was crazy hard for me, at least. I was working two jobs, trying to balance schoolwork, um, and I still volunteered on the weekends as well. Angelica admits there were times she thought about giving up on her education, and a new study shows she's not alone. In Idaho, only 12.7% of Hispanic adults hold a two or four year college degree. That's dead last in the nation. 
And as you can see, it's almost 10 percentage points below the national average. CWI administrators are working to change those statistics by building relationships between students and with faculty. They sometimes tend to feel isolated. Uh, if there isn't a specific event, specific people they can go to in terms of orient them into a college environment, what college lifestyles going to be, what it will be like. So we're trying to make sure that these individuals connect to staff members at the institution. CWI is also starting a mentoring program. Angelica is now trained to help incoming students navigate college life. She believes with guidance, more Latinos will feel empowered to not only try college, but complete it. Now that we notice that there is more help and more support out there, I think that we're able like, to come out of our shell and just, just go for it now. And this health sciences major has a message for anyone even thinking about going on to higher ed. It was hard, but it's, it was worth it. It really is worth it. This fall, CWI will offer peer mentors to incoming students for the first time. The school plans to track retention rates to see if their new social programming works to keep students in school. If you have a Making the Grade story idea, send me an email or a message on Facebook. For Making the Grade, Michelle Edmonds, Six on Your Side. Now we do have a quick update to bring you regarding the story from the top of the show about an officer involved shooting. The man that was on the run in that case has turned himself into police a short time ago on an unrelated warrant. They are not releasing his name at this time, but the female suspect in that car that took off is still at large, but police say they do not believe there is a danger to the public at this time. In other news tonight, the Idaho Conservation League hosted a flight over the Kumo Mine Project this morning, which they say could threaten downstream communities that rely on the Boise River for drinking water. Canadian mining company Kumo Co. is hoping to get permission from the Forest Service to build 10 miles of exploration roads and to bulldoze 137 drill pads. The Conservation League is concerned about the exploration and the potential of what could be one of the largest open pit molybdenum mines in the headwaters of the Boise community. Mining is the number one toxic polluter in the United States. So downstream residents should have real concerns about what happens in the headwaters and should have a voice in how this project is being uh, analyzed and how the Forest Service is proceeding. The group will host a public event on July 12th and to give you a sense of scale of the potential project, if the mine were located in downtown Boise, the bottom of the pit would be below sea level. Well, hot rodders from all across the Treasure Valley sped down to the Expo Idaho today for the 13th annual Motor Fest. The yearly tradition has become one of Idaho's largest outdoor motor shows. With burnout contests today, drag races, food trucks and much more, it was an automotive experience for the entire family to enjoy. It's just a great day. We got food trucks, we got fun, everything's going on. It's all different. It's not just a car show where you go out to a parking lot and uh, stand around and look at cars. You get to see them running, you get to see them driving. With all the fun running at Motorfest, it was also about giving back today. Check out this car, raffled off to a lucky winner today by the Boise Rescue Mission, a fully restored 1955 Chevy truck. All proceeds from those tickets will go to the Patriot Fund for Idaho veterans. Still ahead on Six on Your Side, details about the Treasure Valley Partnership, giving kids a one-of-a-kind whitewater experience. And today was a typical July day, but a cold front is moving in our direction. How much that will cool things down and when we'll go back up to the 90s. Coming up next. Now, the On Your Side forecast. Well, after ending June on a slightly below average note, we're starting July pretty much where we expect to be this time of year. We were 85 degrees for the afternoon high at the Boise Airport. That's just two degrees shy of the average or normal of 87 degrees. And our morning low 56, pretty much right on, just one degree below average. Temperatures will be cooling over the next couple of days. And here's a look at the mountains uh, during twilight time, a beautiful evening at Redfish Lake. The temperature's a little bit on the cool side. Uh, McCall seeing plenty of sunshine as well today. You can just see that twilight glow on the horizon here. Temperatures there also getting a little bit chilly and that trend will continue into tomorrow morning. The next few mornings in the mountains will be on the chilly side. It did get up to 73 this afternoon and McCall 74 was the high in Stanley, 83 down in Twin Falls and 
for most of our region in lower elevations. We saw afternoon highs in the 80s, but in places like Portland and Seattle, afternoon highs were only in the low 70s, and that's because there's cooler air headed our way. Just a few clouds over the mountains around Grangeville. Uh, the Clearwater Mountains is just seeing a little bit of cloud cover this afternoon. That's about it for clouds in southern Idaho, and that's because of the uh, high pressure that we have dominating our weather right now, but we do have an area of low pressure that will be moving in our direction with a northwesterly flow that will bring this cold front through and that will cool our temperatures for tomorrow and Tuesday. Tuesday we're expecting afternoon highs in many if not all valley locations to only reach the 70s and this will likely be the last time we'll see 70s for afternoon highs for a couple of months as this ridge of high pressure moves right in behind that cold front that will move through pretty quickly during the day on Tuesday. So Wednesday the 4th of July we're expecting afternoon highs to shoot up into the mid 90s. So as much as a 20 degree increase in temperature from Tuesday afternoon to Wednesday afternoon. Tomorrow 82 for our afternoon high in Boise. It will be a little bit breezy, especially in the afternoon. Those northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour gusts up to 25 at times and pretty much 82 across the board for afternoon highs. Sunny but a little bit breezy in mountain locations. Lower elevations in the mid 70s but only up to 68 degrees for your afternoon high in McCall. In the east central mountains pretty much the same story. Sunny but a little bit breezy, especially uh, down around Fairfield on the Camas Prairie. Only up to 69 degrees the afternoon high in Stanley and in the Magic Valley it will be a breezy day. Nothing unusual about that. Winds out of the northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour and highs in the low 80s. Here's our extended forecast there. You see 78 on Tuesday, but on Wednesday, the 4th of July, up to 97 degrees. I would not be surprised if Wednesday, Thursday and Friday we saw some readings in the Treasure Valley in the triple digits and then next weekend we get back down to 89 degrees for the afternoon high on Saturday. And if you're in or headed to the mountains, here's the forecast for the next seven days. Those morning lows on Tuesday and Wednesday in McCall into the 30s. So if you're Chilly. camping out, be sure to have an extra sleeping bag and then back to the mid 80s later in the week. All right. Nice week to get up into the mountains. Very nice. Thank you, Steve. You Coming up on six on your side, LeBron James makes the announcement NBA fans have been waiting for what the future holds for the King after the break. Six on your side at 10 continues now. Idaho is known as the whitewater state, but rafting gear or going out with a guide can get pretty expensive. So for that reason, many kids don't get the chance to experience the rush. So YMCA is partnered with Canyon County Paramedics and the Caldwell Police Department to get kids out on the water. Looks like they had fun too. Six on your side, Steve Dent rode along on the Payette River and pay attention to the teamwork these kids displayed. There's a rapid up ahead! making friendships and trying new things. Uh, a lot of these kids are going to have memories that last them a lifetime, things that they normally would never get to do. The Vikings! This was a great opportunity for us, Canyon County Paramedics and, and uh, Caldwell Police Department, to spend the whole day with kids, telling them about how important it is to be safe around the water. What did you think of them? Oh, nice, nice. 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 I know how Vikings go. Um, these kids were helping one another not only get in the water, but get out of the water. I got in with the most rowdiest boat crew on the river, but hey, we're the Vikings! Push them off! I mean, judging by the smiles on everybody's face, I, I think it's a success. Absolutely. These kids got a whole new perspective of the role models that the community has in front of them. Oh. I'm really, really thankful. Really, really thankful. Uh, thankful for the opportunity. Steve Dent. Six on your side. Well, after weeks of anticipation about what the future could hold for LeBron James, basketball fans learned tonight the King is taking his talents to L.A. 
James is leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers to join the Los Angeles Lakers. James signed a four year, $154 million contract with the team. The basketball star player played his previous 15 seasons with the Cavaliers and the Miami Heat. Nicknamed King James, the 33 year old has been to the NBA All Star Game every year since 2005. He's also a two time Olympic gold medalist and the youngest player in NBA history to reach 30,000 career points. Still ahead on Six on Your Side, the debate over the president's Supreme Court nominee continues to heat up. We'll have that story coming up. Hey there. Six on Your Side at 10 continues now. President Trump is working to narrow his choice for the next Supreme Court justice, and the importance of the pick isn't lost on those on either side of the political aisle. ABC's Linda Lopez reports. President Trump says the fight to confirm his choice for Supreme Court will be vicious. The president, in an interview with Fox Business, says that despite this, he expects the process to go quickly, at first saying... I think we're going to have support from Democrats. Then a few moments later, reversing himself. The other side, all they could do is obstruct and resist. That's all they want to do is stop things from happening. One of those things Democrats hope to prevent? Relitigating Roe v. Wade. The Roe v. Word, you know, Wade is probably the one that uh, people are talking talking about in terms of having an effect. For conservatives, including many evangelicals, the opportunity for a second Trump appointment to the high court is a dream come true. We'll continue to do everything we can to fight for uh, the unborn. For the president's opponents, it's a nightmare. Women's access to safe legal abortions on the line. With Senate Republicans holding a razor thin majority, the president is courting five key players. Democratic Senators Joe Manchin, Heidi Heitkamp and Joe Donnelly, who face reelection this year in states that Trump took in 2016. And two Republican women with a history of strong support for abortion rights, Senators Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins. A candidate for this important position who would overturn Roe v. Wade would not be acceptable to me because that would indicate an activist agenda that I don't want to see a judge have. President Trump says he'll announce his choice July 9th. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. In tonight's installment of Finding Hope, researchers say people on certain medications are five times more likely to overdose on opioids. We're talking drugs like Xanax, Valium, and Clonopin. The study found the risk was usually the highest during the first three months of taking both drugs. Researchers think this goes back to poor communication among doctors. They say people might see different doctors for different health issues and doctors might not know everything a person's being prescribed. The FDA has warned doctors not to prescribe those meds together. Here's a live look at downtown Boise from our Toyota Tower Cam Network from the Grove Hotel. Final check of your forecast is up next. Thousands are expected to line the streets of downtown Boise on Wednesday morning to watch the We the People Liberty Day Parade. The 2018 theme is Embrace Independence and Live Local. Organizers want to focus on the positive aspects of American culture, and like any 4th of July parade, you can bet there will be floats, bands, lots of fun for the whole crowd that shows up. The parade will start at 10th and Jefferson Streets and begins at 11 a.m. on Wednesday. And of course, Wednesday is Independence Day. Did you know that Tuesday is the day that Idaho became a state 128 years ago? I do now. Tuesday will be 78 degrees <laughs> up to 96 on Wednesday. All right, thanks for joining us tonight. You can wake up with Good Morning Idaho at 5 a.m. The extended forecast has been brought to you by Bymart.